Could you imagine your name being written in the world's history books? How about in God's history book? Well, think about this. When President Trump recognized Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu compared him, compared President Trump now to King Cyrus the Great, who let the Jewish people return to the land, I believe it was like 2,500 years ago. He compared him to Lord Belfar and President Harry S. Truman. And he says the Jewish people will always remember him. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Listen, in the White House, in the White House, uh, uh, President Donald Trump and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu are talking together and they're talking specifically about, you know, the 70th year anniversary is going to be in May of 2018 and that uh, the United States Embassy is going to move from Tel Aviv to the true eternal capital of Israel, Jerusalem, on the same 70th, 70th year anniversary. And they're talking about, you know, building the embassy there, you know, that it's going to cost a billion dollars. And you go, I can do it for $250,000. Well, this is the so, first time yeah. that the prime minister has been in Washington, D.C. Since that. Our nation's capital, since President Trump has declared Jerusalem as the eternal capital. So it's huge significance. And I want you to listen carefully to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and what he says. He's going to speak historically. He's going to go back 2,500 2, years all the way up to President Donald Trump and what God has done right now through our president, the president of the United States. Check it out. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to have Prime Minister Netanyahu and Mrs. Netanyahu with us. They've been friends for a long time. Uh, we have, I would say, probably the best relationships right now with Israel that we ever had. I think we're as close now as maybe ever before. Jerusalem was a wonderful thing, and uh, I know it was very much appreciated in a big part of the world, not just in Israel, in a very big part. So that was a decision that I had to make. Many presidents were discussing whether or not to make that decision, and uh, they promised it in their campaigns, but they never were able to do what they should have done. So I was able to do it, and I think it's something that's very much appreciated in Israel, but far beyond Israel. Uh, we are very close on trade deals. We are very, very close on military and terrorism and all of the things that we have to work together on. So the relationship has never been better. And Mr. Prime Minister, Mrs. Netanyahu, it's a great honor to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, Donald, Melania, Sarah and I want to thank you for your extraordinary friendship and hospitality. It's always a pleasure to see you both, but this is the first time we meet in Washington, America's capital, after you declared, Mr. President, Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And this was a historic proclamation, followed by your bold decision to move the embassy by our upcoming uh, uh, National Independence Day. I want to tell you that the Jewish people have a long memory. So we remember the proclamation of the great king, Cyrus the Great, Persian king, 2,500 years ago. He proclaimed that the Jewish exiles in Babylon can come back and rebuild our temple in Jerusalem. We remember 100 years ago, Lord Balfour, who uh, issued the Balfour proclamation that recognized the rights of the Jewish people in our ancestral homeland. We remember 70 years ago, President Harry S. Truman, was the first leader to recognize the Jewish state. And we remember how a few weeks ago, President Donald J. Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Mr. President, this will be remembered by our people throughout the ages. And as you just said, others talked about it. You did it. So I want to thank you on behalf of the people of Israel. This is so exciting, isn't well, it? This is so encouraging because in the previous administration, there was this hostile uh, approach towards Israel, even poking Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the chest. And just to see. Yes, he poked him in the chest. I mean, chest. really, just to see this, this change and for the President of the United States to say, this is the best relationship we've had with Israel ever. It's huge, significant. Yeah, as a matter, as a matter of fact, get, ready, get Angry Birds ready because I want you to see this. But I know this one particular thing that was said is 4326 here. You know, when he's talking specifically about relationship, he said, you know, we have the best relationship. Here, put up 4326. He said, we have the best relationship right now with Israel that we've ever had. Mm. That is so important. It's not like it's just, 
you know, two friends doing something. Right. You know, it's just like, it's Israel and America. And when you see Angry Birds, you're gonna be blown away at how different things are and they change. Also, let's go over that quote, I mean, specifically what Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said. It was like powerful. It's so powerful because the Prime Minister measures his words and when he speaks, he speaks things that absolutely count. He knows Communicates exactly. Communicates really well. He's an excellent communicator and this is what he said. Right there with the President, this is what he declared. In the Oval Office, I want to tell you that the Jewish people have a long memory. So we remembered the proclamation of the great King Cyrus, the great Persian King, 2,500 years ago, he proclaimed that the Jewish exiles in Babylon could come back and rebuild our temple in Jerusalem. We remember 100 years ago, Lord Balfour, who issued the Balfour Declaration that recognized the right of the Jewish people in our ancestral homeland. We remember over 70 years ago, President Harry S. Truman, who was the first leader who recognized the Jewish state. And we remember Mm -hmm. just a few weeks ago, President Donald J. Trump recognized Jerusalem and Israel's capital. Mr. President, this will be remembered by our people throughout the ages. So you're talking about King Cyrus 2,500 years ago, (laughs) you're talking about Balfour, and then you're talking about 70 years ago with President Truman. And he, and, and what a great company. This is how significant, it's, a, it's a, it literally an eternal type thing. It makes me oh, think yeah. about the prophecy that Pastor John Kilpatrick gave at the beginning of this administration, not yeah. in it. And he spoke specifically about what God was doing with our president and with Israel and why he was putting generals around Israel because some, some real dark clouds are forming, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says, over, or, over Israel with the enemy trying to come in. But God is going to protect Israel and Israel's, uh, America is going to stand with Israel. But listen to the prophetic word given by Pastor John Kilpatrick about this very day. I was riding along the highway last Thursday evening. I was engaged in a conversation by cell phone with my administrator regarding budget matters. As I was listening to her answer a question, I heard Holy Spirit interrupt me and said, how do you spell Truman? I thought for a moment and I said, T-R-U-M-A-N. He then said, how do you spell Trump? And I said, T-R-U-M-P. I immediately made the connection. He proceeded to ask me who did President Truman lean on to help get the Jews back in the Holy Land. I said, General Eisenhower. The Lord said to me, I have raised up Trump and I am also giving him generals to help defend my people, the Jews, to keep them in their home. What was? will be again. He then asked me, how do you spell truth? I said, T-R-U-T-H. The Lord said, he's changing the appetites of people. Instead of the public now rejoicing in rumors, they will now become excited to hear the truth again. They will develop a love for the truth and reject the lies as well as the liars. This will not be true of everyone in every place, but a shift has already happened Truth had fallen in the streets, but I tell you, I'm lifting it up again, and it shall cause great rejoicing. I, the Lord, have done this by my own power, by my right arm of might, and by my justice. Give God praise. Hallelujah. so important prophecies God telling us history in advance and this was given you know Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says God does nothing unless he reveals it through his prophets first and this prophetic word came at the beginning of the administration God spoke to Pastor John Kilpatrick Church of His Presence and John Kilpatrick Ministries you know during that time and now you're seeing that come to pass and that you can take courage in that as a matter of fact right now you know we want to hear from you in our community comment below write to us this is just 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 excite you 
understand the adversary of God and the people that, that are against God and God's people. If you're against God's people, you're against God. Understand this, that they're not going to be happy. But what do you want to do? Do you want to be on the right side of the just side, the side that the creator of the universe wants you to be on? Mm. Or are you going to join you know, the side that's not going to make it? I mean, if you look prophetically, there will be people trying to come against Israel, but God's going to deal with them abruptly. And it's going to be, it's going to appear, it always appears the adversary looks like they're going to succeed. Even they believe. But look at history. It, over and over and over again, they really believed that they were going to destroy God's people. And every time to this day, they have failed. And, but people like uh, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, uh, the, the, Theresa May? No, the runner during that time, uh, during World War II. Oh, Neville Chamberlain. Not to, but the one that replaced Neville Chamberlain. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill, we got it. <laughs> he had to stand up. He had to stand up and, and declare in the midst it looked like they were going to be destroyed. They're all gonna, alone. All alone. And, you know, Great Britain's an island. And so this thing was coming in from everywhere. And they kept on getting on the phone and trying to get, you know, our, our president. Uh, FDR, FDR, please. FDR, Franklin Delano us. Roosevelt, you know, come on, get involved. And you know what? If, if, if America would not have gotten involved, Great Britain wouldn't be there today. Mm. That's how significant the force and the blessing that God's put on America to be able to stand with Israel and then those two powers standing together that's just that's amazing you know what's taking place right now so we want to hear from you you should be encouraged you know share your thoughts about that how exciting this is and you know and comment below write to us and email us be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV you know a lot of people want to abide with the Lord but they just don't have a plan to do it you can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.